Hello walkers and welcome back to City Walks Virtual Tours. My name is Henry and I will be your proxy walker today. I'm going to spin you around real quick. Hold on to your seats. Okay, that's me. I'll be your proxy walker today, your virtual tour guide. Um, although it's not really a tour, it's going to be a nature walk today. I'm going to spin you around again. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to try and not talk too much today. Uh, but I do want to give you a little bit of info up front, and then we will spin around again and give you that sweet view of the snow-capped mountains here. Um, we, oh, first of all, it is 50 degrees Fahrenheit, 10 degrees Celsius, pretty windy day here, 2 p.m. in early November. Um, in Montana, just south of Livingston in Paradise Valley, it's a new spot today, and uh, it's Strickland Road, um, and the reason I'm walking on the road is because it is uh, the middle of rifle season here in Montana, hunting season, and I don't, I couldn't find my blaze orange, and so didn't think it was the best idea to go poking around in the woods right now. Up oh, there's a couple deer up front here, a couple, three mule deer I see. We'll keep walking up a little ways, and then we'll spin around. Um, uh, I'm going to share some thoughts with you today, but mainly we're just going to enjoy the ambience. There they are, they're crossing the road. Three, four mule deer. Here comes up a fourth. There you go. Uh, Strickland Road heads west up from Paradise Valley. You can see uh, going up here. Private property on either side, I believe it belongs to the O'Hare Ranch. Um, and I'm going to spin you around here for the good stuff. You hear a jet flying over Ted. The O'Hares have been a ranching family in this area for ages. Um, pretty well known, uh, common to hear it referred to. In fact, I think they own one of the spring creeks that you can pay to fish on, uh, which is pretty, pretty cool. Uh, we are looking east now at the Absorica Range. Absaroka, as some people might say. Uh, beautiful, beautiful mountains. Uh, we've gotten, we got snow on the last walk. I showed that to you. And I am a day late um, getting this out because it was uh, gray, windy, cold, rainy weather all weekend and just couldn't uh, muster up the courage to get out here and do this. I huddled up, read some uh, a history book and ate some soup and just enjoyed the weekend. Hope you did too. <clears throat> okay, so uh, I mentioned it's private property on either side. Different states and different countries, I guess, have ways of, uh, different ways of specifying that it's private property. Often it's a sign that says private property, no trespassing. Um, but you see the, uh, is that a bird or something mechanical squeaking? I think it's a bird. Um, orange blazed uh, post. There's another one down here. Um, some places have different color, blue or purple, but uh, in Montana, it's orange. Sorry about the wind. It is a windy, one of the windiest places in the country. So <laughs> on average, um, anyway, that was an interesting little tidbit, maybe, maybe not but I thought I'd point it out anyway. We've got some beehives over here to the right. Um, I'm gonna pan to the right here. This is the hog's back or the hog back and that's private property, but they open it up for, uh, to people that do hiking and running up there, which is super generous, um, but they do close it down during hunting season. I have filmed one or two walks up there. Uh, I'll try to remember to link those, uh, certainly link them in the uh, on the website. I also wanted to thank our Patreon supporters. I've gotten a couple new Patreon supporters. Thank you so much for your generosity. You can find a, uh, a link to become a Patreon supporter and or a, a PayPal donation link um, down in the description below. Uh, I appreciate any support, but certainly not required. Uh, and 
And so just like to give that a shout out. I was also thinking about today, I read an article recently and I wanted to share with you that apparently <clears throat> as little as 22 minutes of moderate to vigorous exercise a day can negate the effects of um, our long sitting times. I, there's probably a better way to phrase that, but you know, we sit at our desks for long periods of time. And they did a study and found that just 22 minutes a day is enough to negate that. Um, now, obviously that's not enough to keep you fit and in shape, but I, I find that encouraging that, you know, we, in a world where we're told everything has to be extreme and intense and, the, and perfect, um, sometimes it's doing a little bit is, is doing better is, <laughs> is, is enough. So I um, hope you guys, and, that, and I guess one of the reasons made me want to share that is because that's kind of what this channel is about too, is showing you guys uh, new and different places and interesting little details. Sorry about the wind noise again. Um, and, uh, you know, because walking is one of the best, they, they keep doing these studies, one of the best ways to maintain health and fitness in a low intensity way. Um, you know, we probably need to do some strength training as we get older, some cardio, you know, in general more is better, but you, you don't have to be an ultra runner to get out and walk or to get onto the treadmill and walk. So I would encourage you guys, if you aren't already, to, to give that a shot. Wow, I think the wind, the wind is really whipping now. And I'm gonna adjust my microphone real quick. I apologize. Seems to be doing all right. I mean, it's a little better. Um, wanted to point out this too, this bluebird house. We get mountain bluebirds here in the spring and summer and people like to put up little houses for them to nest in. And uh, I think they, they are, I believe they're insectivorous, insectivores. So it's nice, they, they run around eating flies and mosquitoes and stuff. Correct me if I'm wrong. I just love the emptiness of this, of Montana. It's getting less and less empty, but um, I think that's true for most places. These are juniper trees here. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna tuck this in my jacket, so we'll try that for a little bit. Um, juniper trees primarily, got some sagebrush over here. Uh, still, here I'll show you. Still uh, Got its leaves, it's that sort of soft blue color and the smell of it is just amazing. It's wonderful, especially when it gets wet in the summer. Oh, it's perfume. Um, I don't know what creek this is over here, but it's a creek. And this is cattle run ranching country, so we'll, we'll pass some cows up here, some black Angus. And I think we're just gonna walk a little bit. Um, one of the things, sorry, I know it's hard for me not to talk because I love to share stuff with you guys, but uh, not everybody loves that, but that's okay. On the far side of the hogback, uh, probably about that direction, look at those clouds. Um, there are a couple different rattlesnake hibernaculums, which is where they uh, hibernate over the winter and they crawl into rocks like these. There's probably some up along this, these rocks in here. Um, and they crawl in there for the winter and they hibernate. And in the spring, they come out. And 
they don't go very far at first, uh, and then as it gets warmer and warmer, they'll disperse. Uh, and I think there's some mating involved in there, but we went up last year, and I would love to take you guys again. It's not like we didn't find anything like the uh, like you would see on National Geographic with hundreds of snakes or anything, but we definitely found several and uh, gave them plenty of uh, safe distance, but it was pretty cool to see them. And a little, I mean, you have to be very watchful because they really blend in. And luckily these aren't very, these, the prairie rattlers are not aggressive at all. And they will get, do everything they can to get out of your way because um, they're scared of us. So it's only when we step on them or corner them that they're really a problem, at least to my knowledge. Certainly people have gotten bitten and dogs have gotten bitten. Oh, I know, I was gonna ask you guys something. Uh, a little thank you for everybody who responded to my last on video query. Um, I wanted to ask you, I, I mentioned that 22 minutes, I read the article. I was wondering if you guys would be interested on the website of me writing up some of these things and sharing the health and fitness aspect of walking and, and all the benefits that it can offer, uh, or some of the benefits anyway. Uh, let me know in the comments section of the YouTube video, and I would love to hear your feedback on that. There is a skeleton over here on the left. I'm not going to take you over there because it is private property and pretty thoroughly marked. Uh, but you can see it back there. I don't know if it's a cow or an elk or something. It's pretty big. It's kind of right in there. Boom. Anywho. Anyway, let me know about the walking and health and fitness information. Um, there's all sorts of interesting new studies coming out about it and how beneficial it is. And, uh, and also, how little it actually takes to make a difference. Again, not to necessarily slim down or anything, but just to make a difference. Um, doesn't take a significant amount of effort. Oh, my microphone's about to drop off here. I guess it's no longer about to. There we go. Sorry about that. They've been um, using this as a bit of a quarry for gravel, it looks like, and stone.
was uh, I was hoping to to get walking and up to my starting point because I parked the car and walked up to where we started in time to catch these snow-capped mountains with the sunlight on them because there was some uh, sun in on them which was absolutely just striking but hopefully yeah we might get a break in the clouds over here but maybe not seen three cars here on this walk and <laughs> that's three more than I saw driving up to do a little scout driving back and then walking up Creek and this old big old cottonwood tree here. You know we look at the landscape, especially with this wide angle, the phone set to a wide angle, and it looks, it's easy to blend everything together. Uh, but when you start to look at the details and looking a little closer, you, you find these like this little ravine over here and that kind of uh, wind scarred tree at the top and a little dead tree off to the left several dead trees, I guess. Um, and you notice the various shades of green poking through the brown. It's really kind of kind of cool. You know, and you get over here to these old fence posts. Uh, who knows how old that piece of wood is. Decades and decades. Probably part of the original fence. one of those blazes, orange blazes, marking, marking private property. I'm going to spin you around because we do have some sunlight behind us and it's kind of pretty. See it peeking through back there, lighting up that hillside. Not very rugged, jagged mountains until you get up in there and then you start to realize <laughs> how, uh, how much effort it takes to get your body up one of those places. Still, not quite as much as that. Look at that. Oh, I love the contrast the snow creates. It really starts to show the texture of the landscape. 
course, once we're fully snowed in here, it'll turn to monotone, depending on the light. The basin straight ahead, I believe, is Deep Creek. Um, I did a little walk up there with you guys one time, if I believe. Um, and it's pretty, pretty nice up there. I think it was in summer when I did it. Um, but that whole area, ooh, I want to say 2010 maybe, big fire. And one of the things I want to point out is the sense of scale, right? So the, I, from my perspective, these mountains seem bigger right now than they do when we don't have this hillside to the left and the trees to the right to give them context. The wider the view, the smaller they look. Um, I've got a photo of my two boys, they're little. They don't really understand what's going on, but that whole mountainside was on fire in 2010, a big fire. And uh, I remember, and I've got a picture of them smiling with it in the background. Uh, a little bit of a non sequitur photo. Anyway, uh, I remember seeing a uh, fire suppression airplane, like a big C-130 type plane, flying along halfway up that mountainside and realizing, whoa, that's just such a, sense of scale to see that tiny little airplane, which is actually massive, uh, dwarfed by those mountains. Let's take a look at this little creek. I'd love to think that that was, that blockage was due to a beaver, but I think it's just uh, branches and stuff getting caught up. Another one of my favorite subjects is how beavers have um, how they shape the landscape and, and uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They create these reservoirs of water that the water eventually gets down, but it just slows it all down. So instead of rushing out in a big flood and being gone, it sort of banks it um, and lets it slow down, slowly come down through the system much more slowly. Uh, and in doing so, it adds moisture to the ecosystem and they, um, there's no way of really knowing, but before beavers were extirpated from most of the United States, they think the, the, the landscape was much more, um, had much more water to it, held more water, supported more growth, supported more trees. I would love to see uh, more and more of that done and, and honestly a lot of landowners are starting to do that because they want to save the water and it does uh, end up taking away some land that becomes beaver ponds and they chew up some trees and stuff but uh, and they also encourage tree growth which takes up grass uh, but it also keeps that water in the ecosystem and um, I think has a net gain for the landowner. And a lot of people are actually starting to put in uh, synthetic or uh, man-made beaver, uh, beaver dam analogs. I um, love hearing the sound of that rushing water. There's a little piece of metal in there too. <laughs> anyway, I just love that, the idea of that, of something so simple as that as letting these animals come back and do their thing now that beaver hats are no longer in fashion you know just getting out of the way sometimes can be enough <clears throat> Oh, we're at 25 minutes, so if you are just doing your 22 minutes for the day, you're, you're good. You've negated that long period.
period of sitting in front of the computer. So good for you. Good on you. Of course, we're going to keep going. Love these leaves sort of blown off, flagging in the wind a little bit. We had a deep freeze before a lot of these trees actually had a chance for their leaves to turn, so they just died on the limb. And it looks like the winds have stripped one side and not the other. I don't know if it'll come through in the video, but you can kind of see, start to get an idea of what I mean when the, uh, the frame through which we look at these mountains, the physical frame, uh, opens up. They seem less, uh, less stark, less extreme. some wind. <clears throat> so I'm just going to point out with my finger here a couple things. So that is Deep Creek, I believe. Off to the left here is Seuss Creek, where we walked a couple weeks ago. And off to the right is, I think it's about there, I think, yeah, right about there, in, in, in there. That's uh, Pine Creek, sorry. We've done a couple walks up there as well. Beautiful, beautiful waterfall up there. And it's only about a mile of a walk up, pretty easy hike. Uh, unless you want to go beyond that up to the lake, and then it gets pretty steep. Which I've never actually been up to the lake. Keep meaning to. Couple curious horses off to the right there. So we're coming up on Old Yellowstone Trail, and I believe it used to be the through road down the valley. You can see Highway 89, the traffic out there, uh, across those fields. Uh, and then not far beyond that, maybe another half mile beyond that, is the Yellowstone River. I don't think we're going to get sunlight on the peaks there. I think the clouds are toying with us. Uh, you can see, I believe, down valley, um, which is upstream towards Yellowstone. A lot of probably rain down in there. I think it's too warm for snow still, but uh, kind of beautiful in its own way. And then off to the right, the sunlight that is, uh, I think the clouds have sort of stalled out right there for whatever reason. So this creek has turned into a, um, or been diverted into a irrigation canal which will help people further up the valley um, irrigate their hay fields. And 
just wanted to I notice these berries in here. I forget, maybe they're rose hips, because that's what they are. Beautiful contrast with the otherwise overcast day. You got a small flock of starlings, probably. Nice. In the winter, when you're driving down the road, the highway, a lot of times, because there's so much hay in here, this is what they're using, what they're growing <clears throat> for the cows. You can see off the left, um, you'll see just dozens and dozens and dozens of deer all along this valley, um, snacking up for winter, finding the food, the easy to get food. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us today on this pretty short walk, but still beautiful. Uh, you know, it's, it's hard to find a, a bad day in Paradise Valley here. Uh, it can be pretty harsh in the winter if you live here, but it sure is a nice place to get out and spend a day or two as well. So hope you enjoyed it. Um, come back. I don't know where I'm going to walk next time, but uh, I'll take you with me. Until then, keep on stepping.